Okay, Maureen, you're live. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. For My name is uh, Maureen Crocker. I'm the Planning Director for the Transportation and uh, Drainage Operations Group at Houston Public Works. And we have scheduled this fourth and final public meeting for a set of applications that Houston Public Works is preparing for the Community Development Block Grant Mitigation Program. I have a short PowerPoint here that we will use as the basis for our presentation. And then at the end of the presentation, uh, we welcome your questions. So please hold your questions until the end of the presentation. And we will uh, direct you then how to enter questions into the chat box. If you have questions during the course of the presentation, you may add the questions to the chat box then, and we will address them at the end. So how are we gonna approach this? Uh, we're gonna explain some history and background on the CDBG mitigation program. Uh, the applications that we're preparing and the process for submitting them to the state general land office and uh, outline which areas of the city will be covered by the applications. And then after we walk through the individual locations, we will stop and begin to answer questions. So the CDBG mitigation program is a new program that was created by Congress following Hurricane Harvey. And in February of 2018, Congress appropriated $12 billion uh, to communities for projects that would mitigate disasters that had occurred in 2015, 2016, and 2017. So it wasn't so much uh, a disaster recovery focus as in the past, but to move towards mitigation for these communities that experience disasters to try to kind of harden their infrastructure and be better prepared to deal with disasters. Since it was a new program, it took the Department of Housing and Urban Development a while to put together the rules for the program. So it wasn't until August of 2019 that HUD put a notice in the Federal Register that explained the program, the types of projects that would be eligible and uh, the funding allocations for it. And in that notice, the federal government provided $4.2 billion for events that impacted the state of Texas during 2015, 2016, and 2017. Also within that allocation was about $62 million allocated to the city of Houston associated with that disasters we experienced in 2015. So as we move forward now, the state general land office has prepared a state action plan for how to implement and allocate the $4.2 million that went to the state. And under that plan they developed, Houston is eligible to apply for grant funding under the 2016 and 2017 competitions. The 2016 competition is, uh, the state is making roughly $150 million available for that program. And it has authorized eligible entities such as the city of Houston to submit up to two applications. And each of those applications can request up to $10 million. The 2017 competition that the, that the GLO has established has significantly more money in it, uh, $2 billion. And under that program, eligible entities like the city of Houston can submit three applications, each of those requesting up to $100 million each. And in addition, eligible entities can partner with another entity and submit up to three more applications, each of those totaling $100 million each also. So the city of Houston is preparing two applications under the 2016 program, and it is preparing six under the 2017 program, the maximum for which we are eligible. The uh, Texas General Land Office has established a set of criteria by which they will rank the applications received. 
this table shows a list of those applications and the maximum number of points that can be or that will be allocated for each. Uh, the county composite index is a ranking of risk throughout the state that Texas has developed. And Harris County is in the highest risk category. So all projects submitted that are located within Harris County will receive 10 points under that category. Some of the other criteria are uh, more income based. So the social vulnerability index and the low to moderate income category look at uh, income and then other factors such as education, employment, uh, and those will be very specific to the actual project area. The per capita market value is considered an indicator of a local government's ability to raise funds in order to undertake these types of mitigation projects. And then uh, under leverage, that refers to a local government's or a, a, an applicant's willingness to participate in the cost of the project. So any application that includes a 1% cost share will receive five points under the scoring system. The state is also looking for communities that have taken positive steps towards mitigation and they are uh, allocating additional points for that. And within the city of Houston, we've been pretty proactive, particularly lately. The city has approved a resilience plan, a climate action plan, and has initiated the complete communities program that is very neighborhood focused and working with residents to identify um, mitigation needs as well as put those into a plan for moving forward. So all of those will be referenced in our applications. This is a map that shows the distribution of federal flooding projects, federally funded flood mitigation projects throughout the city. The labels highlighted in green are projects that are already underway that have been funded by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. Those are large infrastructure projects that are being undertaken with either Harris County Flood Control District or um, TxDOT in one case. So we are working with partners to try to put together large regional projects to reduce flooding throughout the city. The other projects shown on this map with either the white labels, the yellow labels, or the pink labels are projects that we will walk through following this. Uh, they are the individual applications the city of Houston is preparing for the CDBG mitigation program. So the first projects we'll take a close look at is will be submitted under the 2016 program where the uh, maximum award federal award is $10 million. And this is a really innovative project that Houston Public Works is developing in coordination with the Houston Parks Department. And we have identified two parks in the A-Leaf area. Um, much of the area is located in the floodplain. The parks are loca located along a Harris County Flood Control District channel. And we are proposing to reconstruct these parks and add detention elements to them, whether it be playing fields that are dropped down a few feet so that in the event of a storm, they'll hold water. But uh, when it's not wet, they can be used for regular activities or adding actual detention basins with um, park-like amenities, exercise equipment, trails, trees, and really trying to green up the area as much as possible to add uh, green vegetation slows the movement of water and can mitigate some flood effects also. And highlighted on this map is the A-Leaf Forest area. This neighborhood, uh, there are a couple local drainage improvement projects in the current CIP. And so this neighborhood will benefit from the additional detention that will be available in these parks. The second project that the city will submit under the, 200, uh, the 2016 competition is in the Brayburn Glen area. 
and this is for just standard local drainage improvements in the neighborhood um, that is located on the southwest corner of the Sharpstown area. A larger project in the Sharpstown area is is going to be proposed in partnership with the Harris County Flood Control District. And on this application, the Harris County Flood Control District will be the lead applicant. But it proposes uh, a combination of two things. One, increasing the size of uh, the flood control district channel. The, it's referred to as the bent lift ditch. And then also adding some larger storm lines below Fondren Road. And both of these facilities will carry water from the northern part of the neighborhood down to Bray's Bayou and move it out of the neighborhood more quickly and significantly reduce flooding in the Sharpstown area. The second partnership project that the city is proposing under the 2017 competition is in the port area. And this partnership is with Port Houston and the Buffalo Bayou Partnership. Um, it's got two elements. The first element is in the northeast section of the project area in the Pleasantville neighborhood where uh, Houston Public Works proposes to upgrade the storm sewer system in the Pleasantville community. And then uh, with that, we will construct a detention pond to hold some of the water during extreme events and we are working with Port Houston to use some Port Houston property for that detention pond. Then just southwest of that area at what is referred to as the Harbor Street site is another piece of property owned by Port Houston that um, the port will contribute so that a park area and community center could be constructed on the Harbor Street location. And the the actual Harbor Street property would be elevated and the community center would go on this higher ground so that in the event of uh, flooding, residents could access this higher ground and get supplies or take shelter and the city could use it as kind of a command center for any uh, response and recovery activities. The the lily pad concept as that's referred to uh, also includes construction of a pedestrian bridge across the bayou so that residents from the Magnolia Park and Central Park area could access the site on foot if there was significant flooding in the area. This is really, this is a pilot for the city of Houston. We'd like to do this one and hopefully do it in other areas of the city also. And then the final partnership application will be with the International Management District in the Huntington Village area. And the primary component of this application is the construction of storm line improvements both north and south of Keegan's Bayou in the Huntington Village neighborhoods. For the three remaining applications the city can submit under the 2017 program, the city will be the solo uh, applicant. The first one is in the fifth ward area. Stated area shows the entire uh, part of the community that would benefit from the drainage improvements. The main component of the fifth ward project is the construction of a large trunk line below Gregg Street that extends from Quitman South down below, uh, below, I, below the railroad tracks and I-10 down to Buffalo Bayou. And then in, in addition to that, there will be more localized drainage improvements in the Market Square neighborhood, which is just south of I-10. The second big project the city of Houston uh, is applying for funding for is in the Cashmere Gardens area. This project includes uh, significant investment in new storm lines on several streets as well as uh, improvements to much of the open ditch system that exists, regrading and fixing culverts. On the west side, it also includes the addition of rain gardens. 
the rain gardens will be another pilot element uh, that the city's going to test. And uh, if we can construct them here in the Cashmere Gardens area and then test the operation and maintenance requirements of them, it's the city's goal to incorporate more of those green infrastructure type improvements going forward. And then the final application is in the Sunnyside area. This application is primarily uh, proposes two new large trunk lines, one below Cullen Boulevard uh, from just roughly north of Belfort down to Sims Bayou, and the second from MLK, uh, I'm sorry, below MLK Boulevard from Saltwater Ditch down to the Sims Bayou area. And over off of MLK Boulevard, there will also be some more localized neighborhood drainage improvements. These construction of these elements should provide significant benefit to the Sunnyside uh, neighborhood. And then uh, the Harris County Flood Control separately is proposing an application for funding that would uh, allow for construction of capacity improvements to saltwater ditch. And saltwater ditch is the light blue line you see on this project map. And if flood control district is able to get funding to increase the size of that, it would increase the benefit to the Sunnyside area. So that's the uh, short description of the applications the city is proposing for funding. These applications are available on the city's uh, drainage studies website and where you can get more details about the scope, the costs, all of them are proposed for funding under the CDBG mitigation program. And there is a, um, an email address that's shown at the website. It's drainage studies at houstontx.gov where anyone can submit questions or comments about these projects. The city will have this information available on the website as we move forward with project development. Um, the official public comment period for the CDBG mitigation application to the state closes tomorrow, October 1st. And at that point, we will take all of the comments we've received to date and roll them into the application that will uh, go before city council next week for approval. And then with city council approval will be submitted to the Texas General Land Office by October 28th. So again, all the information's on the uh, drainage studies website at Houston Public Works. The information, any comments received by uh, close of business tomorrow will be included with the applications to the state, but the information will remain on the, on the website past tomorrow. And any inquiries or comments we receive past tomorrow will also be addressed by uh, the project team. So please, we encourage you to let us know your thoughts and stay in touch with us as we move forward with these projects. And thank you for joining us. That's really uh, all we had, we really wanted to get through today. And now I'd like to open it up to questions or comments you may have. So if you have a question or a comment, please add it into the chat box on the right side of the screen. And you can either hit the send button to send it uh, personally, or you can uh, also go to the ask anonymously, and then the question will be submitted without your name. So please feel free to do so. Adam, have we gotten any questions so far? We do not have any questions yet. All right, well, then we'll give that a couple minutes. Now, maybe just... Um, Scroll back to the main map that shows all of the projects throughout the city. See if that triggers anything in anyone's mind.
Adam, I'll make, I guess, another request to see if there's anything coming in. Does it look like we're getting any questions? No, we're, we're not getting any questions yet. All right. I think then what we will do is, um, you know, as we stated in the presentation, this information will remain on the website. We will respond to any questions that come in through the email address, uh, drainage studies at houstontx.gov, and encourage people to please share their thoughts with us on that. And unless any other questions have come in, Adam, I think we can call this to a close. Well, actually, I, I have a question. Maybe this would help some of the attendees. What's the timeline? Um, so the public comment period runs through tomorrow. Um, what's the rest of the timeline for these applications? So uh, the applications will be brought to City Council for approval next week on uh, the 7th of October. And then all of the applications must be submitted in the electronic portal to the Texas General Land Office by October 28th. After that point, um, the state has indicated that, that it's going to try to start making awards in early 2021. So if funding is awarded to these projects, we can move them forward into design and construction as soon as we have an agreement with the state. That would happen probably sometime uh, the second or third quarter of next year. I'm still not seeing any questions coming through, so Maureen, maybe we can close this out. All right, I think we should do that. Thank you to all that joined us. And again, please do not hesitate to reach out uh, via the email address with either questions or comments. We appreciate your support. <laughs>